Power station 858 Delta Delta is about uh, 7 miles to the south. 858 Delta Delta Tower, good evening. The wind 125, runway 24, clear to land. 24, clear to land, 8 Delta Delta. Are we the last customer? There may be more, but I won't be here. Thanks. How many years have you been controlling? Uh, I just crossed over 10. You're a familiar voice. Voice of calm and reason. Somebody has to do it. Have I ever mentioned that I love my job? Really, I do. Like, I love it when it's busy, I love it when it's calm. But most importantly, I love being there to leave the light on for everyone coming back home after a long day and playing that little part in the story that so many different people's lives happening at once, all in the busy place we call the Delta. People weren't in to fly, starting at the beginning, professionals in the middle of a long day, aviation enthusiasts of all ages coming in to enjoy the restaurant, and pilots coming back to the base at the end of the night. Welcome to Podcasting on a Plane, your aviation audio magazine. I'm Brandon Gonzalez, and you're with me in the tower at West Coast. And a lot of stuff happens here every day, and it's my pleasure to bring it to you. And today in the Delta, it's all about feeling good, because I think we could all use a little bit of that right now. now. I don't need to tell you, flying provides it all. The highest highs, the greatest adventures, the most gratification, and whether you chose it or it chose you, I know you know what I'm talking about. So let's start with a hypothetical story about a guy I may or may not have met here in the Delta, and we're going to call him John. John's 47, he looks 57, unfortunately, and he feels about 77. I mean, he's doing okay, he's making some decent money finally, he's flying for a major, he flies something made by Boeing, those six-leg days of flying at the regionals are long gone, but somehow he still feels like life's really tiring. You know, hotel sleep is better in the hotels that the major pays for than it was at the regionals, that's for sure. But even though those six-leg days of the past are gone, well, now they're replaced with Transcon Red Eyes. It's awesome, but it kind of sucks too. I mean, by all accounts, John's made it though, right? But after 15 years of struggling to get here, there's still one big question to answer. Is the grass as green as he thought it'd be? Well, sometimes he wonders. But no matter how he feels about it, the flights still need to go out. Time zones need to be crossed, weather needs to be dodged, the schedule needs to be kept, and these things take a lot out of you no matter how strong you are. We know that tiredness comes with the territory in aviation, stress too, but is there anything we can do about it? Can we make some lifestyle choices that'll help us stay feeling better despite all the stresses imposed by our modern aviation lives? Can we retire in our 60s and not look and feel like it's really time to throw in the towel? And hey, while we're at it, you think we could even shift the paradigm of mandatory retirement a little further down the road? All right, all right, maybe that one's a little touchy, but politics aside, I want 60 to be the new 40 so we can all have that many more flying years in our logbooks. Don't go away. Today's all about wellness, for you, for me, for the next generation of aviators. Aviation's one of the most alpha businesses out there, and why shouldn't it be? There's a lot at stake, but a lot of pilots, a lot of people, they sometimes think of wellness as some sort of weakness. Like as if taking a second to plan the viability of your very existence is anything other than a top priority, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that it's not. Not at all. Matter of fact, it's here to make you stronger. Something dawned on me the other day. My birthday isn't for a couple more months, but that's always the month my medicals do. And I don't want to say exactly how old I am, but let's just say that from now on, I won't be going two years between physicals anymore. And as this next milestone birthday inches ever closer, I can't help but reflect on how life is going. These are considered the middle of my prime earning years, professionally, family life, physical fitness, you know, they all go together. And for the most part, as I look back at the crazy bunch of circumstances and decisions that I call my professional career, I'm actually pretty happy with the way things have gone. And if you haven't figured it out yet, one of my favorite parts of it is this show, because it's the time you and I get to spend together through the streaming network that is the internet, and it's one of the things I look most forward to in the month, and I'm beyond happy to bring you the talk you're going to hear today. Because even if your life is basically the awesome dream you thought it would be, there's still always something to learn, something to enjoy, something to share, and plenty to be grateful for. And speaking of things to be grateful for, I got a nice review on Apple Podcasts by a guy named Cello Tom, and he says, love the show, Brandon, two exclamation points. Thanks, Cello Tom. And you know, that really fills my glass up, and I'm glad the show has meaning for you. And out of nowhere, I got this really cool message via Facebook from Nathan McDonough. He says, hi, Brandon, recently joined the community, loving the podcast. I searched for a while to find a show that was engaging to non-pilot, non-av geeks like myself, and podcasting on a plane hits that spot. So I was wondering, have you ever been gliding, powered or otherwise? I have a general interest in aviation, and I'd love to make a career out of it someday, but I'm not in the financial position to change careers or to pay for flying lessons. Gliding, however, is absolutely achievable, though, and relatively cheap. 
Is it something you'd recommend as a hobby? On another note, after listening to a few episodes, I went and purchased a flight stick in Microsoft Flight Sim, so thanks for that too. I'll buy you a coffee on payday all the way from the UK. Nathan. Well, Nathan, thank you so much for the note. And you know what? I've actually never been gliding. Really, I've never done it. But yeah, man, I'd say if you can afford it and you want to do it, I am all for you doing it. And I hope that you'll share your experiences with us all. Real quick, I actually count a glider pilot as a shining example, though, of somebody who showed me as a young aviator how awesome your aviation life can be. Growing up and having my first job in Telluride, Colorado, I always got to see a relatively actually famous glider pilot known as Glider Bob. He was flying his passengers around every day in the mountains and over the ski resort, and he showed 14-year-old me that there's always some cool niche you can carve out for yourself in aviation, something nobody else is doing that's a ton of fun and that brings a smile to the face of everybody who flies with you. Unfortunately, though, Glider Bob passed in an unfortunate accident a few years ago, but I still have his example as a fond memory of my early aviation days. So I say do it. And we can't all wait to hear about your adventures, Nathan. Jarrett Davis is a new patron. I sent him a personalized thank you note, as I do for all new patrons who join the community, and he sent me back this. He said, dude, you were born to be a controller with that voice. I do a lot of public speaking, and I went to auctioneer school just to learn to speak better. But you got me beat hands down. Love the show and happy to provide some assistance for my enjoyment. Keep it up, JD. (laughs) Thank you, Jarrett. And you know what? I didn't know auctioneer school was a thing. And I, I don't know, I might look into that. It sounds cool. Hmm. And lastly, Derek Thomas. He's back. And talk about gratitude coming full circle. Derek was patron number one of this podcast way back when. So an extra, extra special welcome back, Mr. Thomas. Well, after that, I'd say it's time to get into a story about wellness, aviation, and how you can add a little more of it into your aviation existence too. On Saturdays, I fly. I fly other days too, you know. But I've got a standing thing with an owner that's been going on for years now, and sometimes I do a little proficiency work with another friend right before that flight, since they're based out of the same FBO. We did our approaches one time, and the airplane was working perfectly, and and we even brought the airplane back in time for the next guy. The other owner, to be exact. His name's Buzz. Now really, Buzz, whom I had a part in teaching to fly in the first place, also way back when, was about to take 4 through Tango out with a first-time small aircraft passenger, and I was lucky enough to meet said first-time flyer. His name is Lance. And it was amazing to see the excitement on his face, that look of anticipation, and for something that we as aviators are always so grateful for. Just a nice, fun flight. Unfortunately, I wasn't there when they came back, but it turns out Lance had a pretty amazing time. Big surprise, right? And what's cool is that he's sort of uniquely qualified to appreciate something so cool. And that's because he's the founder of Infinity Wellness Partners. Here, how about, let's have him tell you. We're an international corporate wellness company that prepares professionals for the most healthy and productive work life. Pretty cool. And if there are any airline execs out there listening to this, well, I hope you'll consider giving Lance a call. But I couldn't let this one slide by. I had to sit down with Lance and hear the story. The story of a first flight in a small aircraft. The first time in a new world. A story of wellness and living your best aviation life, but from a pro. And in addition to the great story, Lance has some really helpful tips for you to think about and make these little changes that make all the difference. And this one actually gets a little personal too, because I serve as the guinea pig at one point. So you're all going to get a little window into what makes me tick. Yeah. Anyway, I hope you like it. What do you say? You ready to feel good? I was celebrating a 39th birthday in January 2020 and was thinking how I wanted to have a new experience, how I could get out of my comfort zone, how I could help create a memory. And I immediately thought of Buzz, my friend that's a pilot and owns his own plane at my gym. We've had a number of conversations and he's incredibly passionate about flying and his journey to becoming a pilot, I asked him if he would do me a huge favor and take me on my first flight in a small aircraft for a birthday gift. He accepted and all of a sudden I got swept up into this new world that I had no idea about. Being a passenger in a commercial airline is completely different than seeing the inside 
the details and what it's like to truly be a pilot in a small aircraft. The first thing that popped up in my mind was fear. When we're doing things that are new, unpredictable, and things that you don't have experience in, fears can pop up. So it was interesting that I noticed anxious thoughts leading up to the flight. Buzz did me a great favor of sharing with me a packet that he put together for all of his passengers so that they would have an understanding of what it's like and what can happen with a big focus on professionalism and safety. After reading it, I was a little more scared, <laughs> but found myself being reassured by the attention to detail, the length of effort that he went into creating the document and making sure that his passengers were going to be as comfortable and confident as possible. So these are the things that led me to the actual flight itself. And I remember feeling that I was more nervous leading up to it rather than when I actually saw the plane, got in the plane, flew with Buzz, and landed. So it was really fascinating to learn about FEAR, which an acronym that is very helpful is false evidence or expectations appearing real. And so it helped remind me that fears are what is holding myself and my clients back from experiencing and creating a life, relationships, health, careers that they truly dream of. And so this was my effort to do that. I'll always remember arriving at the Carlsbad Executive Airport I've never been in one before. And when I pulled up with Buzz and I saw his plane out of the hangar glistening, I was completely transported back into being a child. <laughs> and I was just so happy and full of joy and realized that I was in a world that I have never, ever been to. The first thing that struck me was the preparation that Buzz put in to getting us ready for the flight. It appeared like he had a 70 point checklist before we even went into the plane itself. It was amazing how he went over the entire plane to dot every I, cross every T. And it made me really appreciate the precision and the seriousness at which he was taking into this flight, which made me feel more confident and comfortable. When we got into the actual plane, I was transported into another world where I had no idea. <laughs> I couldn't speak the language. I didn't, wasn't able to translate what I was seeing. And it was so impressive for me to see what pilots need to manage and monitor throughout an entire flight. It was a weird sensation to hop into the plane and take off whenever we wanted. There was no TSA. <laughs> there was no driving to the airport, no waiting for my aisle. And it was just a, a wild experience. I felt free. I felt a lot of freedom and we hopped into the plane and all of a sudden I'm wearing the headset and I quickly learned that I, as the passenger, am, am going to be fully engaged in this. And I'm not just in a joy ride, <laughs> sitting back and relaxing, but my participation, my engagement is not only important for a successful flight, but a safe flight. And we prepared the plane for takeoff. We did a few runs with revving the engine and making sure that all the settings are right and functioning properly. And we took off. All of a sudden, 
we're up in the air and we are flying and it's me and buzz and the world and it's a surreal feeling and experience to be up there alone and i was so impressed with what pilots have to know and get trained in and how full on flying is i mean i was watching him spotting planes and helping me spot planes he's talking to air traffic control he's talking to the other pilots and planes that are passing he's monitoring all the different gauges and he was calling it his alzheimer's prevention strategy to keep him his brain and keep his memory and attention locked in so amazing i also really appreciated the perspective that being in a smaller plane gives you to be able to see the world in a completely different way and to feel that freedom of being able to travel wherever you want, similar to a bird, and how peaceful at times I'm sure it can be, and how meditative and mind clearing that it can be for those that are flying. And so I immediately caught where the passion can come from and where the desire and inspiration to do more. And Buzz told me at the end of the flight that becoming a pilot was one of the hardest things he's ever done and that he was able to gain confidence in doing anything now that he is a pilot. And it reinforced to me that professionals continue and people in general, we need challenges. He was in challenge in his career. And so he decided to become a licensed pilot and experience some serious challenge. And that helped him grow. That excited him. That gave him a reason to wake up and that in turn developed into confidence that he can possess internally for anything in life. And I was really, really touched by how that challenge and accepting a new challenge created that confidence within him. As a coach, I choose to be the living lesson for my clients. I choose to go first. And what that looks like is following my goals, following the intuition or the impulses and instincts within me that tell me to make different decisions in my life and to go through the experience so that I can share with wisdom and compassion and empathy and integrity so that I can ask a client or invite a client to take an action in their life and they'll feel viscerally that they'll feel the authenticity. They'll feel that this person actually has done it or has lived it and walks the walk. And I will invite us all to consider that we need to take leaps in our life. And I love looking at someone's life. It's literally a story. It could be multiple stories and different chapters. And I invite you all to look back and reflect on the leaps that you've taken, the times when you've bet on yourself, the times when you left your comfort zone, the times when you had to truly practice courage and have faith and belief. For me, one of the major leaps that I took in my life was starting my very own company. And what I'm learning about leaps is that the net always appears when that leap is in alignment with what's best for you in your life. When I took a leap, it wasn't well calculated. <laughs> it was not well planned and prepared, but there was a deep belief that I would not fail. A deep belief that this is what I'm supposed to do. And to be your own boss and or CEO, and you are your own boss and CEO of your own life means 
accepting full responsibility for creating what you vision. And this is critically important when working with clients and creating health relationships, careers, and lives that they truly desire is no one will create that life for you, that health for you, that relationship for you, that abundance for you, except you. You truly are the pilot. You're not alone, but you are that pilot. And so it's up to you to identify the destination that you're going and to navigate the path and the flight plan as efficiently, safely, and joyfully as you can. And courage isn't a lack of fear. It's following your heart with fear. And so I invite you to look at your life and identify areas that may not feel very fulfilled. And the only thing that's truly holding you back is yourself and your fears. One of my favorite questions to ask clients and myself, if I'm stuck or someone's stuck, what's the fear? It's pumping the brakes on your movements. Thoughts create feelings. Feelings create actions and reactions. Actions and reactions create your reality. So if you ever want to feel or act or react in a different way or experience something different in your life, here's a really empowering point. All you have to do is change your thoughts. Changing your thoughts changes the way you feel, which changes your actions and reactions, which ultimately changes the life that you see around yourself. And so I had to do that when I was jumping into my own company and facing the fear. And it was one of the best gifts that I've given myself. And when you give yourself a gift, it's literally a gift to every single person that knows you because you are more alive. You are more living your life. Wow, that's an incredible story. So Lance, as you're talking, the thing that I'm thinking of is not only back in my own origination as a pilot way, way back, but I see this happen to so many folks that they feel that passion for flying. They've taken the risks, they've invested their soul and, and their money and everything into this, and they've managed to get themselves pretty far into a career, which, you know, is good. And And things are you know, the bills are getting paid. They're kind of slowly moving up in their seniority and so forth. But there's a thing that seems to happen where the wellness part of the equation goes out the window. You find yourself on the road. You find yourself eating at restaurants and let's face it, bars most of the time. You find yourself sleeping at weird hours and, and get up in a time zone where it's before dawn, four hours later than it is at home. And to be more or less stressed, you discussed all the things that have to be monitored and dealt with throughout a flight. And while we're happy to do it, let's be honest, those things can be fatiguing throughout the course of a day. And then when you tack in time zone changes and poor sleep and so forth, things can really get to become kind of a gruel. And unfortunately, then the passion that we once felt for this wonderful thing that's aviation starts to fade and it becomes just a job. And then all those feelings of, of positivity that you had are kind of down and you just want to get paid and go home and sleep. And and that's unfortunate because you're still out there flying. Well, probably at that point, you might work for a major airline. Maybe you're flying a 757 or a 7, a 777 or something like that. Teenage, you would have seen you at the top of your game now, but somehow it doesn't feel like all it could be. What can pilots do to sort of bring back that, that zest for it, that spice for life and make it not so much feel like a gruel anymore, but something that they're truly, truly, truly fulfilled from doing every time they go out, even if it's three in the morning. Brandon, what a great question. And I just want to express, I can imagine how demanding and challenging and stressful a pilot's lifestyle and life and career can be. It sounds like I completely understand how pilots would feel that way and lose their passion and lose the zest, energy, experience, fatigue. A great thing to start it with is a little exercise with 
reminding ourselves and getting clear on what about your work energizes you. I like to call it the energizing and the draining list. Take a sheet of paper, draw a vertical line down the center of the sheet, and on the left side, write what you love about your work. What energizes you? What brings you fulfillment and joy? Anything from the big things to the little things. On the second or on the other side of the sheet, write down what drains you about the work from little to big. That will help you get clear of what parts of your job are fulfilling and energizing you and what are parts of your job that are not. Also can help you tap into why you got started in the first place and what are the things that matter most to you. Now there's there's valuable things that we can do with these two lists. On the energizing list, we can do our best to choose opportunities, jobs, and responsibilities that maximize the, our time doing the things that energize us. On the other hand, the things that drain us, we can start to get clear on the activities that do not fill us up and look to see if it's possible to delegate, to release those, to change as well. And it's also important to know that when it's time to move on. Now, that's a great first step. Next, I want to share with the audience the I, we, all model. The foundation is I, you. You are 50% of every we relationship. If you are exhausted, tired, stressed, not eating balanced, not exercising, not creating enough joy and fun in your life, what will happen to all of your we relationships? You cannot bring your full 50% to all of those we relationships. Now, you can see how the we relationship leads to the all. And so the more we can accept responsibility and show up fully in our 50% in our we relationships, we automatically start to improve the all. This is a great model for a family. Think a uh, two partners and then children. You can see this in a company from the CEO to the C-suite to the whole entire team. This can be modeled throughout an airline. And this is what's most important. And that's what we're here to help you with is how did you cause the burnout that you're feeling? Ooh, that's a juicy question. But Lance, it's not my, it's not my responsibility. Well, I invite you to consider you have a role in it. And how can you keep your passion alive? How do you burn yourself out? Or how do you keep yourself and your desire and passion high? So I would love to share with you all two major systems and philosophies that I practice and share with clients. These are living philosophies that can help simplify balancing health and wellness. Are you ready? Okay. The very first is called the four doctors. The four doctors was built upon the practices of Hippocrates, the ancient Greek physician, who was the first doctor to say that illness, disease, death is not from superstition and gods, but from your lifestyle. And he identified three components, diet, quiet, and happiness. Holistic health practitioner Paul Check identified a fourth doctor, doctor movement. Let's do an exercise together to find out how balanced you are in your health using quiet, that's sleep, rest, introspection, prayer, meditation, any sort of quiet time. Diet, food, beverage, 
quality, quantity, portions, timing. What are you eating and drinking? Happiness. Do you have an overarching goal, legacy, purpose, dream? And what are happy making activities for you? What actually helps you feel happy? And Dr. Movement, we can think of as physical activity, exercise, sport, stretching, walking, all different types of ways of moving our body. What I'm going to invite us all to do is let's rate our four doctors where we currently, how fulfill full they are. Everyone knows right now in these four categories how on target and how full they are in these areas. So I'm inviting us all to rate these four doctors on a scale of one being very low, it's not happening, to five, I'm doing amazing in it, couldn't get any better. So, so write down Dr. Quiet, Dr. Diet, Dr. Happiness, and Dr. Movement, and rate them each on a scale of one to five, low to high. After you perform that, you're going to now see which doctor can improve. Should we ask Brandon to find out if you would share what his doctor scores are? Yeah, absolutely. So as you said that, I, I'm kind of in a little bit of a transition right now where I've, I've gotten my uh, movement, I think, pretty well squared away. I work out almost each and every day. And uh, if I don't go to the gym itself, I go out cycling when the weather's good. And since I live in San Diego, that's most of the time. Uh, as far as quiet, I do my best to sleep and rest as, as much as I can. And during my break time at work, I usually find a quiet place. And I like to do a lot of reading and uh, writing for my podcast and things like that. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, I could probably use that time a little more effectively. But then again, I don't know that that time is really about effectiveness so much as just being quiet. Mm -hmm. As far as my diet, I've been working on that a lot lately. So I think I'm pretty well squared away on that. I'm more or less on uh, something resembling the bulletproof diet right now. And it's finally taken effect and I'm feeling fantastic. And it, actually, as a matter of fact, um, I feel like right now I finally got that to the point where I can feel solid about it. And, you know, I don't have any cravings for things that I used to, to miss or, you know, sugars that were difficult to get away from. So that's feeling pretty good. And then as far as happiness, you know, I feel like that's pretty good, but that might be the doctor that needs improvement because through doing all these other things, I feel very fulfilled. But at the same time, I feel like by the time I get through the work of doing the other things, there's not a whole lot of time to sit back and really enjoy the benefits. So I think maybe Dr. Happiness needs some work. That's a very common one. And thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for being honest and open with all of us. You are not alone in over adulting and not having an, um, enough fun or joy and play. So here's what we would do in an exercise with a client is what would, what action can you take consistently or in a frequency that works for you that would raise this score? Is there something that you could share with us that would help raise your doctor happiness score? I feel that since the thing that's holding that back is just a matter of really time to feel as if I should, or to, to feel free to truly enjoy what experiences I'm having, I feel like maybe something as simple as scheduling my time better or further out in the future so that I can leave larger chunks of time so that I don't feel distracted by the next thing coming up, but I can be more present in the current time might be a very simple way to allow that freedom to actually be felt when the time comes. Did I hear you, Brandon, say that by scheduling larger chunks of time, you're able to be more present and to experience more of the freedom rather than being uh, we'll say preoccupied with what's next or um, what I need to do. Yeah, that's, that's it. I can, I can totally see how you will experience a higher level of enjoyment in all the things that you do by doing that. And I love that you chose the schedule 
and using your calendar. A very, a very effective thing for clients. Your schedule doesn't lie. If we aren't scheduling the things that are important to us, but are under invested in with time, we're going to have a hard time doing them. And so I'd invite you to do that particularly with your happy making, fun, playful activities. And what do you think you'd like to do? Would you like to give this a try for a week, two weeks, three weeks? What might be worth really giving it a good test to see if it does make a difference for you? I'd say at least a couple of weeks, maybe even three weeks to a month. So what does success then look like? To me, I feel like success is being able to enjoy the things that you put the work into to earn. So whether, as you talked about in your example with uh, taking that first airplane flight and being able to appreciate Buzz's experience and as his former flight instructor, I can tell you he put a lot into that and he really got out of it what he put in. And now as an aircraft owner, he, I see him as somebody who uses that freedom and that tool that he has in that aircraft so that him and his wife, they go skiing more than anybody I know. And they're constantly taking that aircraft on adventures and strengthening their relationships and so on. And I think that using that as an example of somebody who earned something and then now has the time to appreciate it, to me, that's what I think success feels like. So even though I don't own my own aircraft yet, I would like to be able to use an aircraft or use aviation more to give my family experiences like that, or even outside of aviation, just use the, the money that I earn from the time that I'm at work and the experiences I have and the people that I meet through doing this podcast and other things to really go out and give my family better experiences and, and to be present in that time because it's been set aside and I don't need to be worrying about what I need to do to pay for it or to find another time to do it or what else I could be doing during that time. Forget all that. I just want to be there then. And to me, that's what I think success feels like is appreciating truly the things that you've earned. Did everyone hear what Brandon said? What a caring, loving, committed family man. You just shared the most important part to behavior change. That was amazing. Did everyone hear what Brandon's why is? Why it's important for him to schedule and block off this time so that he can be more present and have more freedom in the moment and not be distracted by what's next? Is Brandon, did you say that you... What drives you and what you truly desire is to be able to provide your family with experiences and being engaged and present with them during this um, set aside time. Absolutely. That's his why. And I invite you to consider that your why is the uncovered inspiration and motivation to create change. There's going to be times when it's going to be hard or he's not going to want to. Um, and remembering that this is for the experiences and engagement with my family. And that is what keeps us focused. Is there a, a mantra, a motto, a saying, a mission statement that you can say to yourself that reminds you of this deep desire and vision that you have? You know, there's not, and maybe that's something I should actually put down because I don't have, I don't have it in words. I have it in a feeling, but I don't have it in words. Well, the feeling we want to follow, (laughs) this is uh, always your feelings are giving you feedback in the direction that you're moving or the decisions that we're making. And why I'd invite you if to share this, have you shared this dream with your family? Yeah, I, I think maybe not in such a concise version, but I, I think they know. I would I invite you to share it, which in, already increases another component to success is accountability. And letting your intention and intention known by your family that my goal is to help 
create more experiences for us to create wonderful memories and to literally truly be there with you in the moment. And then we can set goals. Maybe we're doing it on a monthly basis. Maybe we're doing it on a quarterly basis. Maybe on a weekly basis. I want to truly be experiencing a memory or being very present with my family can be very helpful to keep everybody moving in the same direction and on the same page. And maybe together they can come up with a little statement like, let's do it for my family. Create wonderful memories. Being a present and fun partner, whatever it may be that helps you recall your greatest intention. And then now you get to act in alignment and make decisions that move you in that direction. Does that make sense? Yeah, I like that. To me, what's most important is not information, but helping to facilitate transformation. And I would love to invite all of our audience members to take one thing that they heard or reminded of, learned, and put it into action. The only way we can create transformation is through consistent experience. We are not what we do sporadically. We are and become what we do consistently. Let's use our shared platform and this podcast to all take a step forward on one area that can help our life feel more fulfilled and commit to doing that for the month that we're in to create transformation. I love listening to podcasts and I always, well, I want to thank you for supporting Brandon's vision and his passion. And I want to thank you for making time for yourself to grow and learn and relax and get inspired and entertain. And I want to thank you for being open to what I may have shared and invite you to test it out and to put it into action. It's my goals are for you to live the greatest life. And just know, this is the coolest part, is that your life is a story. And there's a new chapter that can begin after this podcast ends. And the greatest part of the story is you are not only the main character, but you're the author. And so Brendan and I both invite you to pick up the pen and write a, a masterpiece and take an inspired action consistently to experience more in your life. Lance, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Brandon, and thanks to all the listeners. If you're still here, I know you're a person who today's content resonates with. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't know how my talk with Lance was gonna go, I mean, I knew he had a great story to tell and I couldn't let it go by unrecorded, but I didn't really know if he'd be willing to go full pro on the record. And I'm so glad that he did. So how'd you do? I want to hear about it. And I know Lance does too. Are you going to accept our invitation and act on anything you heard today? Send me an email or record a voice message via SpeakPipe. Just go to podcastingonaplane.com and the little record widget pops right up, as well as links to email me, follow on social media and become a patron if you're getting value from the show and you're in a position to contribute a few bucks. I can't wait to hear about what you're going to do. And if you're rocking your aviation life, I want to hear about that too. And you can share your advice for a long and rewarding career with others. Oh, and if you're interested in that little packet Buzz hands out to first-time flyers, there's a link in the show notes. It's adapted from a template, but I like the one with his personality better. And an extra special thank you to Buzz for sharing and for being a great student way back when and for now being the kind of person who gives enough people the first-time gift of flight that he has to make a welcome packet in the first place. That's all for now. The frequency change is approved till next time and report back on this frequency for the next episode. Good day. The 
Podcasting on a Plane podcast is presented for entertainment purposes only. Brandon's comments and those of his guests, the website's content and any of the social media, etc. are not part of his official responsibility as a controller or as an FAA employee. The views and opinions you hear on the podcast are his and those of his guests and not necessarily that of the FAA. Also, while he's a CFI, he's not acting as your CFI, nor is he your mechanic, your doctor, your shrink or your spouse. This podcast is presented for entertainment, camaraderie and fun, but is in no way, shape or form professional advice or legal counsel. If you're in need of professional advice, get some from somewhere more appropriate than a podcast, no matter how good this one may be.